Tuesday, April 13th, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at why uh, just because the Federal Reserve says that CPI is inflation uh, doesn't mean it is. <laughs> Many of you, of course, know the Federal Reserve is controlled by the bankers. It's a private public partnership. The bankers have taken over uh, the government everywhere in the world. Uh, and why am I going to look at this again? I have looked at this many times. Well, because it needs to be looked at because it's at the heart of the problem. Uh, well, the, the big problem, of course, is fiat currency and they can uh, create it out of thin air. But uh, the consequence of it is rising prices. But the, uh, the heart of the problem, of course, is the inflation. And uh, today we get the uh, CPI data from the U.S. It's supposed to come out at 8.30 a.m. New York time or Eastern time or summer time. Last week when the PPI came out, uh, the number was delayed because it came out uh, so much higher than they expected. We'll have to see if there's a delay uh, this week. I don't think there will be. So they've got several measures of CPI. Uh, of course, the way they calculated CPI back in 1980 or 1990 was a lot more different. Uh, they use things like uh, substitution uh, nowadays, hedonics, uh, which are just ways to... Uh, make uh, the uh, basket of prices that they calculate lower and lower so they can have a lower number. So they can uh, basically lie to people and say that there is no inflation. Uh, so yeah, today the, the CPI is expected to come out at uh, 0 0.5 month on month and 2.5 year on year. The core CPI, <laughs> which is a, a bit of a joke because they take out food and energy from, from, from that food and energy prices, that's expected actually uh, 0 0.2 and 1.5. So we'll have to wait and see for those numbers. But don't forget, those are just prices. <laughs> uh, CPI is the consequence of inflation. Uh, yesterday, I watched a video, uh, an interview Jim Rickards did with uh, Daniela Camboni of Stansbury's Research. It was came out yesterday, and uh, she asked him that question, the, the great inflation debate. <laughs> and uh, he said uh, that uh, we have to look at uh, CPI as inflation because the Fed does it. And the Fed uses it for its uh, monetary policy. I I'm sorry, uh, Jim Rickards. Um, maybe uh, you were advising LTCM and that's why they went bust. I don't know. But uh, just because uh, Jay Powell says that CPI is inflation, you know, doesn't make it so. And it's incredible because he even admits <laughs> that the money supply is growing uh, through the roof, M1 and M2. But he's got this theory that money has to <laughs> change hands several times for you to have inflation, which is just, uh, in my opinion, uh, misguided. Uh, go ask the people in Venezuela or Brazil or other places where you have high inflation if they're doing loads of transactions. They're not, Jim, because the money has no value. People can't buy or sell anything. There is no... Uh, as you call velocity, because people are hard up. So, and I would look at Richard Cantillon, the Cantillon effect as well, Jim, uh, how um, money, when it's created out of thin air, money and credit or inflation, the real inflation, how it flows through uh, the top, the 1%, the people near the central bank, the people connected to the state, that's where the money flows first, only flows to uh, the general public a lot later, and it's uh, debased. Uh, it looks to me, uh, Jim, that you're trying to defend the people at the top to keep the people at the bottom, uh, well, at the bottom. <laughs> you're doing a, a, a disservice, in my opinion, and uh, it's incredible because you've quoted this uh, next person I'm going to talk about, several times in one of your books. You even bought his book. Uh, 
which I actually read before you even came out with your book. And that's Felix Somary uh, and, and the book The Raven of Zurich. You, you, you quote him. You, you think he's a, a great economist. And, and he told us that uh, the state alone is responsible for inflation, but you, you didn't seem to uh, really catch on to that. So what I'm going to do now, uh, Mr. Rickards, is go through what Somary said about inflation. Maybe that will um, clarify your views on it. So first of all, th this is what he said, and this is to do, I would say, with the Cantillon effect, even though Somary didn't mention it. Uh, and I uh, quoted him on a tweet on Twitter, and this is uh, Felix Somary. Uh, inflation, on the other hand, can go on for years without its victims becoming conscious of the incredible way in which they have been swindled. There you go, Jim. It looks like you want to swindle the public <laughs> by putting uh, these ideas in people's head that the, the CPI is inflation. So that was Felix summary. So now uh, I'm going to go to uh, the section in the book where he clearly explains it very uh, succinctly what inflation is. I recommend uh, Jim goes uh, and looks at this page, page 98. He's got the book. I know because he bought the book and referenced it in one of his uh, many books. Uh, it says, and this is summary again, my book avoided any exaggeration of the role banks play. Theories that at the time were becoming fashionable ascribed decisive importance to banks in the whole economic cycle, which is completely contradicted by the facts. Of the four theor theoreticians who represented this point of view, uh, the most prominent experienced the collapse of his own bank. The second committed suicide after running through the fortune he had inherited. The third had never seen a bank uh, in operation. And the fourth totally recanted his views. That did not prevent the wide dissemination of the deposit myth. Myths generally spread wider and last longer than knowledge of mere facts. So here's the kicker. <laughs> uh, the state alone is responsible for inflation. Inflation without government or indeed against government is impossible. So there you go. Jim, he doesn't mention anything about the CPI. Um, yeah, the CPI, it, it measures the consequence of inflation. But when you doctor the CPI and you make the CPI, uh, you pretend that the CPI is inflation, like the uh, economic uh, profession, like the bankers, like the politicians have done for the last 50 years, then yes, you, you can cheat. Uh, you can cheat the number. Uh, if we calculated CPI like they did back in 1980, prices would be rising by about 10%. Uh, you can check it uh, on shadowstats.com. John Williams has been talking about this for, for years. Uh, and if you calculate the way they did in 1990, it's like five or six. So they wouldn't be able to say that there was uh, no inflation if they were calculating uh, the, the CPI, honestly. Uh, and I'll give you an example uh, how they they change things around well first of all uh they, they uh, encourage big corporations to uh create charges for example when you fly uh, if you remember if you're old enough to remember you only used to pay for the price of the flight let's say 300 dollars for a return flight from let's say orlando to new york but nowadays when you fly, you've got all these, you've got the price of the flight, let's say $350, and then you get charges for taking luggage, uh, you get charged for buying the food on the plane, you get charged for taking extra luggage, you get charged for taking your golf clubs. So it's more like $700, really. And in the old days, you, you paid $300, and there's nothing uh, extra on top. So there's a lot of that, I would say. And they still count the flight. Uh, they don't count the charges, right? The charges are separate. Substitution is, let's say, uh, they used to keep uh, fillet steak or prime 
you know, prime rib steak <laughs> on the CPI basket, but that went up too much. So now they use spam. What about hedonics? How does that work? Well, let's say you bought like an, an average car back in 1990, I don't know, for $15,000. And today the average car is $30,000. Uh, they will calculate it <laughs> at the same price as 1990 because they'll say, oh, the car has uh, improved. You know, there's a lot more gadgets. It's more efficient. It's technologically more sound. And they'll say that it hasn't really increased because it's improved the hedonics. But has your salary or your wages gone gone up that much as the car prices? So it's a fallacy. And that's why they... Uh, uh, keep uh, or have brainwashed people into thinking that the consequence of inflation or prices is inflation because they've doctored all these um, numbers. And, and why do they want to do that? Well, uh, and, and it's uh, interesting because Jim Rickards actually mentioned yesterday that people like me and like uh, Austrian school proponents, we think of inflation as prices going up in the stock market and real estate. And, and he's wrong there again, because we don't. We, we think of inflation as the increase in the money supply and credit created out of thin air with no backing to it. And what we mean by a rising uh, stock market and real estate, for example, is the consequence of inflation. Uh, what we're saying is that the rising uh, stock market and real estate should be part of the CPI as well. So he, he got that one wrong as well, which is amazing. But just to, to finish off here before we look at the markets this morning, uh, and I've done this many times, I've got now three old dictionaries and one of them, is from 1925, so Jim Rickards wasn't around then, but the other ones, they're from the 60s and 70s, <laughs> and I know Jim Rickards, I think, was born in the 50s, so he, when he was a child, uh, or growing up, he probably knew the, the true definition of inflation, but it looks like he's been, uh, yeah, compromised, or I don't know, I don't know what the problem is. So let's look at the 1925 definition from the Oxford Dictionary. Uh, so we have inflate, abnormally increase states currency. So you see, the state alone, Jim, is responsible for inflation. Uh, <laughs> it's not the CPI, especially by issue of inconvertible paper. And that's what we have today. Uh, the, the Federal Reserve note, the Bank of England note, they're not convertible at a fixed uh, rate to uh, gold or silver. It's floating <laughs> and it's floating uh, to the bottom very quickly, the value of these state currencies. So that's the 1925 one. Uh, recently, uh, one of the viewers sent me uh, the Thorndike Barnhart definition from the 1960s. So inflation, uh, let's see, Increase of the currency of a country by issuing much paper money. So there you go, uh, Jim. It, it, it's issuing of the currency too much paper money. And who issues the paper money? Yes, it's the state. It's the Federal Reserve and the Treasury. A sharp and sudden rise of prices resulting, Jim, resulting from a too great expansion in paper money or bank credit. So there we, we go. And now we'll go uh, to the 1970s, a little more recent. And this is my dictionary. The It was my dad's. He left it to me. Uh, so um, an abnormal increase in the volume of money and credit, Jim, resulting in a substantial and continuing rise in the general price level. So, yes, if you want to believe the Federal Reserve and Jim Rickards, go ahead and uh, uh, keep believing that the CPI uh, is inflation and that there is no inflation out there. And uh, it, it's ironic, though, because Jim Rickards admits that uh, M2, M1 
both are growing, going through the roof, which is basically the definition of inflation. But unfortunately, a lot of people are going to be caught like the, the frog, the proverbial frog in the pot. <laughs> uh, they're going to be boiled to death, so to speak. Uh, their savings are going to be annihilated uh, from this inflation. So today we're going to get these uh, CPI data. It's not inflation. It's the consequence of inflation. And don't forget that it's they're really doctored numbers. They still might show a pretty big rise in prices, but uh, triple that if you really, really want to know what the, the real uh, price rises are. I think I'm going to get a lot of comments below. There's still a lot of you out there who believe in this um, money velocity malarkey, I would say. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, if there was no inflation, if people were saving so much, as Jim Rickard says, if people had so much money and everything was so great, why is there so many people out of work? Why are, are there so many people still claiming food stamps? Why are there so many homeless people in the big cities? Well, maybe because there is inflation. So there you go. Uh, so let's quickly look at the markets now. It's uh, almost 9 a.m. London. So uh, we've got uh, spot gold. Uh, 17.28 is down just over four dollars. Range has been 17.37 to 17.23. Uh, silver is up 13 cents. Actually, uh, that's a surprise. Up half a percent. It's just under 25. The high is right around here, 24.97, uh, and the low 24.67. The Dow future is up 13. The Nasdaq 100 future is down four points. S&P future is basically unchanged. Uh, the pound is uh, rebounded a little bit since uh, early yesterday. We're now at 137.60, up an eighth of a percent. The euro is down slightly, 119.05. Uh, the dollar is uh, unchanged versus the yen at 109.32. The dollar is unchanged versus the Chinese yuan at 655. High grade copper is up uh, an eighth of a percent at 402.72. WTI crude is up a third, just under $60. Yes, what about the uh, treasury market? We had a couple of auctions yesterday. They went okay, uh, the auctions. So they haven't had problems with the auctions. They had 58 billion of three year notes and 38 billion of uh, 10 years they went okay there's still more to come we're gonna keep an eye on that so uh the 10-year yield is uh almost back up to 170 it's at 169 right now it's up one and a half basis points so there you go uh, if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button please share it far and wide think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet and you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.